Hey guys, Kyle Manzano from Manzano Tactical. So I've had a lot of people ask me about my particular holster setup, and this is one of my guys' uh, holsters, and he was gracious enough to let me put his holster together for him so that I could show you guys what I do. So I run a Safari Land holster with the QLS forking system with the negative camp plate. Uh, this particular one is the V1. It's the thinner one, but in my T-Rex arms holster, I run the thicker one, the new one. Uh, this was the prototype that was sent to me, and I really like it. If you don't have one, I recommend getting the NCP2, but if you already have the NCP1, there's not really any benefit to getting the second one. So anyways, this is what it looks like when you order everything brand new in the packaging. We're gonna take So inside of here is this fancy little wrench that you're gonna basically use for everything. So all this crap we can throw away, throw that away. So the holster comes like this, okay? So I particularly recommend taking this, this, and this, and this off. We're gonna go through all that in this video. So to take this off, it's super easy. It goes down, you pull out the sides like this way and that way, you just pull it out and it pops right out. Super easy. Next step is going to be doing these three screws, one, two, three, with that little wrench that was supplied to you in the packaging. All right, now once you take those three screws off, this is what it's gonna look like. This is the UBL, the Universal Belt Loop Low Ride Adapter. It's the one that I personally use, um, and I usually recommend it to people. Um, my girl, she's 5'5", five five, and even her, uh, her natural arm length is the Low Ride Adapter. So uh, we'll put this off to the side for right now. This is what this is gonna look like. This hood right here, it's a very overrated hood. Um, I personally don't rock it on mine. I took it off. and. People like to use it as like a, a little safety thing, but it really doesn't do anything for you. If anything, it just gets in the way. So to take that off, you just do these two screws right here. And then boom, that comes off right there. Perfect. You just take this off. There's not actually even really a need for it you're not going to screw anything back into that one so the next part and it's obviously uh up to you and if you want to do this i recommend you take these two out this particular one all it does is when you put the qls system in it locks it in um, it's going to be locked in regardless but if you have like a little bit of a wiggle in your holster that's from that the benefit of taking it out though is that when you run a comp or maybe you're running a glock 34 inside of a glock 17 holster you don't have to worry about uh, it not fitting because all it is is creating a little bit of a cushion right there. This is for the light. There's literally zero benefit for this to be in the holster. Um, if you're shooting at the range and someone's shooting next to you, brass will get caught in here with no escape. There's no way that brass can get out of there. So to take that out, you just unscrew this a little bit. take it all the way out, save it, and then this literally just gets punched in. You push that in, it comes right out. This one right here is, is captured by this, so you actually have to pull the holster apart a little bit. Same thing, uh, once you pull the holster apart, you just push that out and then it comes right out the bottom. So if you look inside here, you can literally see straight through it with no obstruction. That makes sure, or besides this little piece of paper I gotta take out, that makes sure that when you're um, shooting, all it does is hold your gun and there's no obstructions in here when you're trying to reholster. So we're gonna put this screw back in, the one on the very bottom here. That one doesn't need to be overly tightened. If it does, what's gonna happen is when you try to reholster your gun, the nose of it is gonna be tapered in. So you see, if you look at the very front here, the more you screw this in, the more it tapers the front. And you see how it starts to have this weird kind of shape to it. You don't wanna do it too much. And this is where Loctite comes in handy. So right there. Right before it starts to actually pushing in. Perfect. Okay, so the holster's ready to roll. From here, why don't we do the, the forking system. 
So the QLS fork system, if you don't know what this is, it allows you to take the holster in and out. So for an example, I have this, right? This is my dry fire rig. I can put this holster in, the male side, the female side, and it just slides right in and it locks in, okay? And then when I'm not using this, all I have to do is press these two buttons on the bottom and it comes straight out. This is handy in case I have different kinds of holsters or different kinds of guns that I'm using. It takes literally seconds to just swap these out. So now we're gonna apply this. The female side is gonna go on the leg adapter and the male side is gonna go on the holster. Okay, so this is where the negative cam plate comes in handy. So for the negative cam plate, it's very easy. It literally says right, left, right, left, right, left. It has the instructions. All you have to do is scan it with your phone. It'll pop up. This teeth section right here is if you're going to add this kind of adapter. You see how the teeth fit? It's gonna, it would fit right in here if you were to opt out for that uh, option. For this for right now, though, what we're going to do is this is going to go onto here. So this is going to go onto here, I apologize. So as a righty, as you can see, what it does is it cants, it's going to cant this. So when you put this in all the way, boom. So when you actually start, you can determine at what angle it is that you want your holster to be canted at. I always go for the extreme. Uh, very far in one direction so that once that's screwed in then this is going to go right on top bang 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 and then it will be in the holster sorry doing this as a as a righty now is different once it gets into the holster it's going to sit like that so it's going to be angled back a little bit if you see the holster is angled back opposed to where it usually is angled this way so we will do this one first. We'll go all the way over one way. So for these three holes, the original three holes that you, or sorry, three screws that you had that were in the original lower uh, UBL that go into these three holes, you're gonna take those screws and they're gonna go into these main holes here. All right, so once you get those three screws screwed in into the holster at whatever angle it is that you decide that you want it at, for me, I always go to the extreme, right? So you see all the way in the corners. Then this is going to sit right on top. And you're just, you see where it says L, L, L. For left-handed people, that's where you would line this up. For right-handed people, R, R, R. Nice and simple. And then you're going to put these screws that were provided with the Allen wrench that was provided into there. All right, so if you already had something set up like this or you had a belt of some sort that was already ready to go, this would be it for you. You would just make, you'd put your gun in, you would make sure it functioned well. And then as you can see, once this goes into here, you can see that the angle that it provides is a lot more steep in the negative camp plate is doing obviously its job. So take that off. All right, so from here, the last thing to do with the actual holster is the nub mod. So OT, uh, OT Defense makes this thing called the nub mod, which basically makes activating this retention system significantly easier. The reason why I always recommend the nub mod to people is because if you're drawing your gun without the nub mod, you would have to hit this with the very tip of your hand. I'm sorry, the very tip of your thumb. But with the nub mod, and I'll show you once I'm uh, done putting it on, you can hit it with the inner part of your thumb so that when you pull the gun out, you have that master grip opposed to where when you have to hit it like this, it's really difficult to try to train yourself that once you hit it, you come back around. So it doesn't make you a faster draw, but it makes you a more consistent draw. So here, super simple, nice and easy. This goes on this side. 
this little piece goes on this side. So it just clamps around. So once it's clamped around like this, it literally just sandwiches the ALS system. You see that line that goes straight in there? All it does is sandwich the ALS system so that you get this screw, drop it in. Very solid unit. You wanna make sure that once you tighten it down all the way that you're still able to activate it. Sometimes what happens is you tighten it too much or it's not sitting correctly. And when you try to activate it, it'll uh, actually be rubbing up against the leather of the holster. Um, also, you can see, you wanna make sure that it's hooking on the bottom of this ALS system and that this line looks as flush as possible, okay? Perfect, so that's your holster. So your holster is completely done. Um, it's the same setup I have on mine with the negative cam plate, with the uh, OTD defense, OT defense um, nub mod. So this is good to go. So once that's all nice and done, we're gonna move on to putting the female side of this back on here. So, sorry, this is the leg strap that my guy got. So you get whatever, color, size, leg strap that you want. You put it on the adapter facing down, right? Because once this is actually on, it's gonna wrap around your leg. If you put it like this to where you can see the lines or whatever kind of rubberized coating that they have on the bottom here, it's gonna be wrapping along the outside. It's gonna be a waste. So make sure that this rubberized coating is facing towards you. From You're gonna put the female side on top of the leg strap. You're gonna put one of these in. Perfect. And then you can flip it over while still holding this side and start that screwing in process. The bottom one, for the bottom one, you might need to use one of the longer screws. You're gonna use the same uh, female adapter, but for the actual screws, you might wanna try to find the, a little bit of a longer one just because of the way. And you'll see what I'm talking about that uh, the holster, on the QLS, sorry, not the QLS, the UBL, the actual low ride plate is gonna flex because that strap is being uh, kind of trapped into the back. These extra screws are just if you have something maybe in the back here or something like that where you need like a longer screw to go through it. Um, so it has that versatility, versatility, Jesus. So you're gonna have this side, which is gonna go on your battle belt or your regular belt, whatever it is that you're using it for. And then this side is gonna be the male side, the adapter, the holster that you're gonna be able to choose and pick uh, where you want that. Alrighty, so that just slides right in. Once that's in, you can see how canted back it is compared to a normal Safari Land holster, which is usually canted like this. So that negative low ride really makes a huge difference when it comes to your natural draw. And then also this OT defense nub mod is absolutely insane. So when you're, when you're drawing the gun, like I said, you hit it on the inside of your thumb so that when you pull the gun out, it has the natural wrapped around thumb opposed to the original when you're trying to just hit it with the very tip of your thumb. So two products, highly recommend. Uh, if you ever need help with any of these things, just hit me up and I'll definitely help out however I can. Thanks guys.